Jesus celebrated the festival, so why not us? Why do we instead teach and spend thousands of dollars decorating with witches and goblins and bunnies and eggs and trees, and our homes don't have a menorah? So here's the good news. According to a book by Dr. Richard Booker, he's oh, totally my favorite author on this subject of the festivals. In his book, it's titled Celebrating Jesus in the Biblical Feast. He says, God is doing a marvelous thing. Of course he is. <laughs> he is breaking down the walls of hatred and misunderstanding that have divided the Jews and the Christians. God is calling the Jewish people to return to their ancient homeland and to their covenant God. He is preparing them for the coming Messiah. Now we know Messiah has come, but the Jews are still looking, but God is still working in their hearts. And at the same time, God is stirring the hearts of Christians to a holy love for the Jewish people and awakening them to their biblical, Hebraic, Jewish roots in their Christian faith. That's where I am. I hope you are too. So remember, the origins of our faith are not in Athens or Rome or Geneva or Wittenberg or Springfield or Nashville. It's Jerusalem. And if you have not gone to Jerusalem on a tour, you need to join us, the Biblical Nutritionist team, on a tour to Israel. And Jesus was a Jew. Christians everywhere are curious, and they're searching for their Jewish heritage. Christians are anxious, like I was, to learn the foundation and begin teaching our children and grandchildren how to celebrate the Sabbath. Yeah, there's a lot of false teachings on what we as Christians can do on the Sabbath. Uh, yeah, a lot of false teachings. And yet the feast of our Lord is fulfilled in Jesus. Remember, every feast is a portrait, is a painting of Jesus's life. <laughs> and you're just, you're just gonna need to read more about it and study about it. It is clearly God's appointed time to reconcile the Jews and the Christians in preparation for the coming of Messiah. Yes, I know we're looking forward to that second coming and they're looking forward to getting to know him as well. So also in that book, Celebrating the Feast, Jesus in the Feast, Dr. Booker, he goes on to explain, because of this prophetic season in which we are living today, millions of Christians around the world are realizing that it is proper, it is good, and it is pleasing to the Lord to celebrate Jesus in the feast. There are a number of benefits that Christians are experiencing by doing this. And some of these are going to be this. Number one, a better understanding of the Bible. Number two, a rediscovery of the Jewish roots of Christianity. Number three, a fuller comprehension of God's plan of redemption. That's huge. Number four, a renewed passion for Jesus. Ah, makes your heart stir, doesn't it? Greater insights into God's prophetic seasons. We are still living in seasons. And don't tell me, yes, spring, fall, winter, summer. No, biblical seasons. Yes. It, number six, it gives us clearer and more powerful teachings through visual aids. Number seven, a discovery of our biblical church calendar. Number eight, a love for the Jewish people and understanding of the role of Israel in the Bible prophecy and current events. And number nine, our last one, spiritual growth and a bonding among family members. When our children and our grandchildren understand their roots, they're not gonna leave their faith. And it's been said that if you can take a teenager or a young adult to Israel and let them walk the steps Jesus walked, go along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, there's not a professor in this world that can tell them it didn't happen because they will say, I've been there. I've witnessed it. So as I was taught in church growing up, if you participate in the festivals that Jesus enjoyed, it is pure legalism. Today, I say it's not legalism. It's about love. It's not a burden that we have to do. It's a blessing we get to enjoy. You see, legalism is putting myself under the law. Instead, I'm seeing the roots of my faith. I'm seeing the scarlet thread of Jesus and all that he did for me from Passover to the Feast of Trumpets and someday to the Day of Atonement. The more I learn and the more I see, each festival points to the next act in God's redemption story. Romans 15, 4, it says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning. The festivals were written for our learning. They were written for our learning as Christians to understand who Jesus was. They are written for the Israelites, the, Isra the Jewish people today, to understand how God redeemed his people and how he's coming to redeem them again. 
So if you want to really understand this, each celebration taught about the coming Messiah. The Old Testament Hebrew story pointed to the New Testament Yeshua. If you want a clear picture of God's complete story of redemption, just look at the biblical feast. Now remember, these are called Feast of Our Lord, not Feast of the Jews. That's, a, that's something a lot of people just don't get it. It's like, oh, that's just a Jewish thing. No, these are Feast of Our Lord. And so here are some facts to help you decide how to celebrate these feasts. Number one, it's not about the eating. I know we think it's all a Jewish, you know, eating, you know, frenzy. It's not. These feasts were about assembling together to meet with God in a special way. And do we not need times in our life to meet God in a special way? Number two, the Hebrew word for assembly is makra. And they probably say it mraka or something like that, which means it's a dress rehearsal. They were to act out for the purpose of revealing the Messiah. As we act things out, it becomes more memorable. It's, it's in our brain, it's in our mind, and we remember what happened. And so I teach, a, a, I have a video on how to celebrate Purim, and it's all about acting out the story of Esther. I mean, it's the greatest story ever. You got the kings, the queens, the villains, and the heroes, and you know, you've got the whole gamut of a theater there. And when your children and, and your adults act that out, they'll never forget God's redemption. All right, so number three, God appointed three feast seasons and seven individual feasts. And number four, these feasts required the Jews to travel to Jerusalem three times per year. Recognize that if God's calling them to come to Jerusalem three times per year, he's saying three times in the year, I want you to pause your normal routine. I want you to step out of your daily you know, activities and I want you to focus on me. And, and we as Christians, we do that. We do that at, at Christmas. We do that at Easter. Uh, and yet, we could do it more. Okay, number five, the three feast seasons, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, they represent three major encounters with God in the lives of the covenant people. Number six, Passover is about how to receive God's peace. Number seven, Pentecost is about receiving his power. And number eight, Tabernacles is about entering into his rest. <laughs> number nine, every redemptive act in Jesus' life happened on a feast day. Yeah. You, you can't walk away from this stuff and just close your eyes. This is what scripture teaches. Number 10, Jesus has come and fulfilled the first two seasons of feast. He's coming again to fulfill the final third feast when he gathers his own to fellowship with him in eternity. Okay, does that not excite you? I mean, it does me with everything happening in our world. I mean, I just can't imagine what heaven's gonna be like. So I just wanna say to you, get ready, church. Get ready. Teach your children, teach your grandchildren the feast because they are a storyline and each character in the story leads to redemption through God's love. So let me ask you, why would you not celebrate Jesus in the biblical feast? Why would you not celebrate Jesus in the holy days? Why would you not celebrate the festivals that are talked about in scripture? You're missing out on so much if you think that this isn't worth doing. That's all I can say. It is, it is, it can really be life changing. And I don't want to overuse those terms, but when you truly, truly, truly understand what Jesus did and each one of those festivals, were part of the story being revealed to the Jewish people. Yeah, and you might wanna say, well, how come the Jewish people don't get it? Well, some people in America don't get it either. Some Christians actually don't get it. But I pray you're not one of them. I'm a net reader, the biblical nutritionist, and it is always my honor to come to you and to share with you God's recipe for excellent health. It's not about your health, it's about your heart. And how much do you love God? Do you know God? Would you like to know God? Visit my website or email me or text me or comment and say, Annette, how do I get to know God? And I'll help you. I have a video, Who is Jesus? I'd love for you to watch that because he's re represented in every book of the Bible, just as much as he's represented in every feast. Thanks for watching and until next time.